Hi folks, this is Rick Doc Walker, the DOC. This is John Kime, and you're listening to The Mess Hall with Rally Captain and Tailgate Ted. What's going on, Rally? How you been, man? Ted, Ted, Ted. I gotta tell you, man, I've been pretty good. I'm excited, and I'll tell you why I'm excited. The reason why I'm excited is because we've got that tumultuous 2022 season out of the way, and we're looking up at 2023. Let's get it. I am looking forward to it, man. I'd say I'm excited too, but not after all the uh, bets I put in this past week in the playoffs. (laughs) I think I put in... I hope Mr. Tailgate's not listening, but five bets and I hit one of them and mm. man, it was just like a, a snowball rolling downhill. I just kept trying to catch up with the next one and with the next one. And I put in a bet for Joe Burrow and uh, what is it? It was Burrow and someone else to both throw a touchdown and Burrow didn't end up throwing one. I mean, it just, it got bad. And finally I got right at the Cowboys Bucks game and I didn't put any money on the Bucks to win, even though I was hoping in my heart they would. I just didn't have a feeling they were going to take the Cowboys down. But I did put money down on a parlay for Tom Brady and Dak Prescott to both throw over one and a half touchdowns. And that hit. So it got me close to being positive. Okay. But I'm hoping, man, this weekend I can get back to, uh, you know, in the green versus in the red. Well, I got to tell you that... Uh... I just wasn't feeling it because of the, the some of the, the L's that I took during the season. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to lay off a little bit. You know, I, I almost felt like calling that 1-800 number. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I'm right through it. See, I, my problem I mean, <laughs> is I live in D.C., so I normally can't bet live. Yeah. But I was in Maryland over the weekend, and I put a bet in on all of the wild card games. And the bet was, you know, for different teams to win. And I took the Vikings over the Giants. Mm. And those of you out there that bet know that you can cash out ahead of time. So at one point during that game, I could have cashed out that bet. If I hit it, it would have got me $200. I could have cashed out for $12. Then the Vikings went down and said I could have cashed out for $6. The Vikings got close again. I could have cashed out again, for like $14, and it just kept fluctuating. It's like, you know what? Let it ride. Ended up losing that damn thing. Well, I could have actually got my cash back on it. Just a bunch of other stuff. And I wish I would have asked you instead, man. You know, you like anything that was going good because nothing went my way other than that very last game, which in actuality didn't go my way because those damn Cowboys are still playing, and you and I are sitting on our couch right now. But that's okay. That's okay that they're still playing because – you know, I was actually happy that they did take Tom Brady down. I, I mean, I know this is going to sound terrible, but I was just tired of Tom Brady. All right. <laughs> so so they they did what they needed to do. They took care of him for me. So now the 49ers need to take care of Dallas for me as well. And I'll be happy. And I, I'm, I, I'm still debating on if I'm going to take any bets for this game. I, I just don't know if I am or not. Um, I, I, I just. I don't know. And uh, one thing that, so, so it's always one of those things like this, Ted, for me. How about putting on the tight end, he's going to score a touchdown. And any, other t- and any other time, not Kittle, not Kittle, for the Cowboys. I can't think of his name. It doesn't matter what his name is. Yeah, yeah Bama. I, and I said, uh, I said, man, you know what? I should. I said, I said no, I'm not going to do it. And what happens? He scores a touchdown. <laughs> so, so but but I said, you know, scared money don't make no money. And I got to tell you, brother, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm, I'm shell-shocked. So I'm not going to be doing anything, you know, too much. Besides, you know, I, I, before the game, I, before the game, before the podcast, I told you that uh, I'm training for this, this, this century ride. For those of you who don't know, I, I, I ride bicycles. And uh, a century ride is 100 miles, for those who don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence. Um, but... Uh, so I've been training for that, and that's where my focus has been, and, and not on bets. So uh, I will continue just to watch and not yeah, put any money down. You're, yeah. you're a smarter man because I put money on George Kittle to get an anytime touchdown score. Kittle has had 
two touchdowns in December 15th, two touchdowns against us on the 24th, a touchdown. He had a touchdown in five straight weeks. All right. Brock Purdy loves him from George Kittle. Yep. He had two catches against the Seahawks with zero tutties. Yep. So there goes my bet. So, yeah, if anyone is wondering, uh, don't pay attention to anything I do when it comes <laughs> to that. And hopefully Mrs. T is not listening because I made a couple for this weekend on that Bills game and that Cincy game and some other ones to uh, try and get back in the right because – you know, I heard that Jeff Bezos is out of the running for the commanders. So, you know, I got to get some dollars right. So I might be able to put a bid on this team because with him out of there, we all got a shot. We got a shot. We, we put our money together, brother. I mean, you know, my travel, eight business, your, 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 your chef stuff and other things you got going on, man. We can, we can do it, brother. We can do it. I was shocked to hear, man. I don't know about you. I was shocked to hear when uh, JP Finley and then uh, a guy from front office sports, it was, and those that are wondering, it's Thursday the 19th at 3 o'clock that Rally and I are recording this. I was surprised to hear that Bezos didn't even submit a bid. He just Not said, yet. you know what? Screw it. I don't even need to put anything in because I'm the richest man in the world. Not yet he didn't. I mean, so it's, just, is this, it's not too late, though, is it? Those were the first round of bids. So the fact that it was the first round of bids, they were due December 23rd. And I was also surprised to hear that there were no bids higher than $6.3 billion because mm. Forbes and a bunch of other articles out there were talking about the commanders going for seven, seven and a half. Some people were saying 8 billion. Well, no one put in a bid higher than 6.3. So what worries me about that is the fact that Bezos wasn't in there. I feel the price isn't going to get driven up. And why I'm concerned about that is, is that going to incentivize Dan enough to actually want to sell the team because he's hearing from outside sources that the commanders are worth 7 billion easy. And if he didn't even get close to 7 billion, is he didn't want to actually sell. And that's what concerns me the most out of this story. And no, Bezos isn't out of the running by any means, but a lot of the rumbling is the Seahawks are going to be up for sale eventually because their owner passed away in 2018 his sister, I believe, or someone in the family is handling all of the estate with that. And they feel eventually the Seahawks are going to go up for sale. Mm. Anyone knows Bezos lives out there in Seattle area, kind of oh, Amazon okay. headquarters-ish. So he could be holding off for that team. Makes sense. And the fact that Snyder hates Bezos, maybe yeah. he just didn't want to hear him put together the highest bid to just get shot down. I don't know. Well, it could be like back in the day, uh, I called it chicken hawking with eBay. You know, that bid, we get down the dog going two seconds and I throw my highest bid, bam, and I'd be the winner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> did, you, did you ever do that with eBay? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, then they put that reserve bid in. Well, yeah. it automatically bid for you after the fact. Because, man, I hated people like you because I'm sitting there and I'm watching it and I'm watching it. And literally, like, maybe my dial-up, I got knocked off or something. And all of a sudden... It ended, and next thing I know, someone put a bid in, like, right at the last second. That was just drive me crazy, man. That's me, baby, all day. <laughs> if there's a Redskins pool cue that you own at your house right now that I bid on back in, like, the early 2000s, I think I know that I, why I lost that actual auction, man. Oh, man. It get to three seconds, five seconds, whatever, brother, and I put my bid in. Boom! It says, you are the winner. Huh? Yes, indeed, baby. All you losers can take a bow. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Oh, that actually reminds me of a story. Uh, Mrs. Tailgate and I went to a fundraiser for leukemia lymphoma. I was winning an award, and we were at the uh, Anthem downtown D.C. Mm -hmm. And it's a silent auction that you can bid from your cell phone. So I let her look at some stuff on the phone while we're sitting there eating and everything else during the award ceremony. And she accidentally put a bid in on a bar cart. It's like $700 for a bar card. Like I live in DC. I don't got room for a bar card at all. Oh. And best be damn sure. I'm not going to pay $700 for a bar card. So I'm sitting here stressing, sweating bullets the entire freaking. And I know it's going to a good cause and it's tax deductible, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But I wasn't about to bid $700 on a damn bar card. So I'm waiting, doing the opposite of what you were doing, hoping and praying that at the last minute someone swept in and actually put a bid down. And thank God someone did. 
because you'd see a bar <laughs> cart sitting behind me right now with my jersey stacked on top of it because I got no place to put that damn thing. Mm, 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 mm. Well, thank you to that bidder who, who took you. <laughs> Saved me some cash because my season yeah. tickets went up and, you know, I, I oh, had an extra $700, oh. man. Oh, bro. So, you know, I st- we don't want to talk about season tickets right now, man. I <laughs> I, I, I got to tell you, I you know, I'm not I'm not even going to get into my me and my rep. What happened between the two of us? That'll be for for a later show. But uh, it wasn't good. And that that's all I'm going to say about that. You know, I sent mine an email today. Uh, I'm right there with you. I know they're yep. due tomorrow. Yep. And I haven't renewed yet. And I'm yep. not saying I'm not going to renew. Yep. I just voiced some frustrations on my end. The fact that the prices went up, the fact that it was a secret, and that we're getting different perks taken away from us, and just a bunch of other stuff. So I'm guessing maybe that's why I didn't get a invite to the new sports book that opens tomorrow at FedEx Field. Didn't get one either. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder if, uh, you know, I know they don't love me over there. I know they put up with me over there, but I'm, you know, they left me out of it considering I have coffee and donuts in my parking lot from time to time. They know I can see the stadium out my window right now and they surpassed me on it and uh, frustrated. And I know I'm most likely going to renew, but I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm kind of frustrated with them and everything going on right now, especially with this whole ownership situation. We don't know. Who's going to own the team? And J.P. Finley was hearing that it could happen as soon as March. Mm -hmm. And the new league year starts March 15th. For those that don't know, that means that's when you can start signing free agents and everything else. But the owners don't meet until March 27th. The owners have to vote and ratify whoever Snyder sells the team to, if he sells the team. Or if he's selling a minority ownership. And a bunch of the stories came out was... He was selling the team or a majority ownership of the team. He could keep part of it, but that still has to to get approved by the other owners. And believe it or not, man, I had a couple, and I'll say Redskins fans, attack me for my thoughts on Snyder selling the team and my hope that he does sell the team. And I, I was dumbfounded, and I actually muted the text thread that the person had going back and forth with me on my cell phone. Cause I just got so angry on your with, cell phone, that personal. Wow. Oh yeah. That person had my cell phone number and they were mm. going back and forth cause they were upset about something I said on Fox five with an interview I did this past week. And it was an anchor asking me if you could make one change this off season, one change to the commanders, mm. what would it be? And those that have never done live TV, you don't get these questions ahead of time. They just kind of hit you. Mm. And I said, man, that's a tough one. Because, I, you know, there's so many changes. We got a lot of holes. And we're going to talk about that over the next couple of weeks. He said, hint, ownership. And I said, well, yeah, I mean, that's one. But that's out of our control. I didn't say that's out of our control. I said, yeah, ownership, that'd, that'd be something nice to change. But for me, it was quarterback one. You know, we don't have a QB one right now. That would be it. But the fact that I said ownership, that person watched it and felt like texting me and attacking me after the fact. And I'm sorry, I, I, I appreciate Tanya Snyder. I truly do. She is an absolutely amazing person, an amazing owner. The problem is she cannot own this team when she is still married to Dan. They are co-owners. Right. There is no way for her to buy this team or keep this team. So if the only way ownership can change means she isn't a part of it anymore, then so be it. You know, you throw the baby out with the bathwater at times. Unfortunately, that's what's going to have to happen here because. Yeah, unfortunately. We've been in this situation and they put the team up for sale. And if they are true co-owners, that should have been a discussion by both of them to put the team up for sale. So not knowing where the existing owners stand on this upcoming season is just kind of where I'm frustrated about renewing season tickets, where the team is on limbo and everything else, because we have no idea who's calling the shots, who's going to approve contracts, who's going to approve coaching hires or fires or what. That's what just drives me so insane about this whole process right now with the sale of the team. I think that a lot of people aren't looking at the behind the scenes, if you will. They're just looking at getting rid of the owner and thinking that everything else will be 
you know, taken care of afterwards. And you, you, you run into a lot of problems when you don't look at the small things. And there's going to be a lot of small, minute details that need to be paid attention to. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the big thing is, the, the headline is, hypothetically, Dan Schneider is out. He's not the owner anymore. And who knows is the owner? Well, now, okay, owner, what do you know about these other things? You know, category, subsection B, C, D, and E. You know, okay, you're the owner. Now you got to deal with it. And Ted, you know, man, what I've realized is no matter, you, you can try to make everybody happy. And for the most part, I try to, to be, you know, straight down the middle. I realize I'm not going to make everybody happy. At the same time, I'm, I'm not trying to make people mad. But I'll be doggone, man. You can just say the sky is blue. And all of a sudden, people will come at you for any reason under the sun, man. So just keep doing what you're doing. You know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And hopefully people can appreciate that for what it's worth. You know, oh, what bro, I, mean? I mean, you're you're preaching, man. You and I put ourselves out there. We do this podcast. We're heavily active on social media. I go on TV from time to time. I'll be on Fox Five tomorrow talking about cool. everything and the commander's new attendance. And I get that. And I'm at the point where I honestly, I don't care about what other people think. Mm -hmm. It does not phase me. It could be someone I am very close with. And that's why people have opinions. I got my opinion on this team. You got your opinion on this team. People have their own opinions on ownership. And there are some people that want Dan out just because of the fact that we haven't won for decades or because of all of the allegations that have been coming across from Congress and this and that. I am just tired of the drama. I'm tired mm -hmm. of all of the non-football stuff that makes headlines. I'm tired of our team being a joke. And that's not to say that's going to go away, that a new owner won't bring that with them. But right now, what I do know is it's up for sale. And if it does get sold, all I care about are the individuals I know that are still in that building, that are good people, like Julie is a friend, that they are taking care of Miles over there, that he's taking care of, that those good people still have homes and aren't thrown out when this new regime comes in. And I've been working on my resume to send them for hopefully an institutional knowledge job for some of those people to take over because odds are they will know nothing about this franchise or this team. And if I can throw my hat in the ring to help, I would love to do that because a lot of the stuff that's been happening lately with the whole Sonny Jurgensen and Frank Herzog thing that happened for the Cowboys game, yeah. not having Frank there and having Frank there with the dates getting wrong on our commander's crest, with the whole Sean Taylor statue debacle, like all those small minor things. Yeah, that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. A new owner isn't going to know or somewhat care about it first. It's those things that still matter to us as a fan base that need to be focused on. And it's yeah. frustrating to me that Jason Wright has not focused on that or still hasn't gotten that right. And I don't know what else we can do. And, and I think the issue is, so a owner, new owner comes in, and like you said, that's small potatoes compared to stadium contracts, stadium deals, you know, the whole nine yards, everything that comes along with running a team and being team president or team owner, rather. You know, a lot of that is going to just fall by the wayside. And I agree with you, man. You know, when we have reached out we get crickets or we get we'll look into it and then you never hear back and and it's like you guys don't understand i'm not trying to be a part of the organization to to be in the front headlights or whatever you want to call it i feel as though we bring a, a true educational wealth with us to help so that you won't have these blunders that now we are in the media for the wrong reasons again. And you don't know everything. I don't know everything, but I'll be doggone. It seems as though we would have known more than what was put out before. And you, at some point in time, you got to relinquish the reins and, 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 and put those feelers out there and make the phone calls to people. 
this to maybe maybe not to say hey i'm not as well yeah you know what a true leader to me says i'm not as smart on or, or well versed on this topic as you may be can you give me a hand with that that's what i would expect that's to it's me happened. what a true what a true yeah. leader what a true leader does certain departments within the franchise have made those phone calls to me mm -hmm. and i have seen improvements in regards to some of those things and out of respect for them i, I won't say what those are on you know oh, yeah. the recording yeah. but other instances it hasn't and there was you know after the whole sean taylor debacle with the towels and everything else in his jersey retirement last year and fans getting less than a week's notice you know i had a very long lengthy conversation with an executive over there explaining to them why Sean Taylor means so much to this franchise. And it was over an hour. And the fact that that conversation had to even exist shows me that they don't know what's going on. And it's, I would, let's be realistic. I would take a pay cut if I took a job there, but I would be fine taking that pay cut because it means I could hopefully help us stay out of the headlines. And I'm not trying to do it to, you know, make a bunch of cash and do this and that right, it's right. to be able to help facilitate a, I guess us not being in the news. I'm going to be on Fox five tomorrow, like I said, and they want to talk to me about the commander's sales going up by 10%. So our season ticket sales or ticket sales in general, I don't know if they're season ticket sales. This was an article from uh, I can't remember what news station came out, but the good news is, Season ticket sales for the Commanders went up by 10% mm -hmm. from the year prior. On the flip side of that article, 31 teams in the NFL sold 92% of their ticket capacity in their stadiums. 31 teams. The Commanders sold 86% of capacity at FedEx Field. So yes, 10% of ticket sales went up, but you're still the dead last in the NFL in capacity and ticket sales. And, mm -hmm. you know, just going back and forth with other fans on social media today, some of them didn't even realize that their season tickets went up yeah. until a tweet I sent went out there. And Matthew Paris from the Washington Times wrote an article about it. The team never made an announcement that prices were going up. The only way people knew was if they looked at last year's invoice and compared it to this year's invoice. Right. And it was shady because if you paid in full, you got a 10% discount, mm -hmm. which is your same price as last year. But if you pay in 0% payments throughout the year, 0% interest payments throughout the year, then you notice that your price went up. So it's just those little things, man, that are just, it's used car salesman-ish and it kind of drives me crazy. And I was up last night lying in bed thinking, that's five grand that I could use to go on a, a heck of an SBEvents.net trip with the missus, you Definitely. know, or something else, and then come back in 2024 when maybe we got a new owner and a new head coach and maybe, you know, something better on the wall. Well, you know, it, what bothers me out of this whole thing is, and, and this isn't going to be a pity party on season tickets, but I, I have to agree with you. And, and I, and one thing that I do know is they last year for the 2022 season, they did a huge ticket blitz to get season ticket holders and, and they're, and they're continuing that. And they're, we talked about it on one of the shows, I believe to where, yes, they gave a lot of incentive for new season ticket members, season ticket holders, you know, or people to become new season ticket members. And whether it was free parking, whether it was free food, whether it was free, whatever, they threw it in. And I understood that because we had a bad product on the field. We just did. And, we, and, and technically, we're, we're getting better, but our product on the field still is lacking. So, you, you know, you've got to give an incentive to get these people to come see, unfortunately, an inferior product. It's getting better. So don't, don't, don't fill my email box up with, or my, my, you know, my private, my people, DMs, because we know it's getting better, but we're not where we need to be just yet. So I said, well, what are you going to do for a person such as myself, you know, and the people who've been here for a while? Well, we'll give you a hat. And I said, a hat? 
I said, do you really think that that's his incentive for me to, 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 to realistically stay a hat? It's a nice so, hat though. I, it's not fitted, but it's a nice hat. I, I, I understand. Sarcasm but, on this side, yeah. <laughs> I understand, but, you know, but, I mean, come on, man. You know, you, we've got to do better. And so that's one of the issues that I had. And then I had the guy trying to pressure me. And I'm saying, wait a minute. You don't pressure someone, not to say I'm, I'm any better than anyone else, but I've been around for a minute. Pressure tactics don't work on someone who's been a season ticket holder for, you know, 15 plus years yeah it, it just doesn't maybe for someone who's trying to you're trying to close the deal on yeah i understand pressure tactics but but don't do that and i said man you're making me resent everything and the only reason and i and i'm gonna put it out there right now the only reason why i am gonna renew is because i like my seat where i sit but what i do know is it will be cheaper for me to individual games just buy them outright yeah. and, and, and float around the stadium. It always you is. Know, you know, and maybe next year I might do that. I might just float around the stadium instead of having my same seat. But I like that seat, you know. So that's the reason why I choose to to go ahead and become a season ticket member. But come on, you guys would I would love for you guys to, you know, give me a little incentive, a little more incentive, just be, just than just having my seat. You know, and they incentivized us last year by giving us customized commanders jerseys, right? If you renew by a certain date, you will get a mm -hmm. swag bag and some customized commander's jerseys. Mm -hmm. It's Thursday, January 19th of 2023. They've sent me the invoice for 2023. I still haven't gotten my customized jersey and that swag bag <laughs> that they promised me last year. <laughs> you know, That's and that real. was another thing that I came back at them with. It's like, I still haven't gotten the season ticket holder present that you guys said I was going to get this year for renewing. And now you're trying to get me to re-up again? I mean, it's just... And the thing is, I'm right there with you. I like the people I sit next to. You know, one of the guys missed a game this year. And I honestly, it's like, I wanted to start calling hospitals to see if he was okay. It's like, we built mm -hmm. a family in our section. Right. And it's the only reason why a majority of season ticket holders don't bounce around. It's because of the people you sit close to. Because it is a bad investment being a season ticket holder for this team. Because the team usually tanks towards the end of the season. And the beginning of the season, we do good in the middle. And I got a clip on that to play for you guys. So you can see why Ron thinks we have a slow start, but it's just that aspect of it. And I'm going to renew. Yeah. I'm just so frustrated with them right now. And the fact that their deadline that they set up is, you know, in less than 24 hours, that's great. That's your deadline, but there aren't people beating down the walls to renew and get season tickets this year, especially with the way everything's in limbo. Maybe if, you know, we had a new owner that people knew about today, but the fact that it's not going to happen until March and tickets are due now, good luck. Because I would love to see who actually decides to renew that isn't a diehard like you or me. Yeah. Good luck. Now, it'll be interesting. But something that we do know is Scott Turner won't be here. And mm -hmm. they let Scott go. So Marty and Ron had their postseason press conference last i want to say it was monday it was maybe actually i think it was tuesday last week because mm -hmm. we recorded our show on monday and for those wondering rally and i are going to do a show once a week it's most likely going to be on tuesdays or wednesdays we just need you guys to go through and subscribe that way you'll get a notification the second it actually drops and hits whatever platform you listen to and while you're there do us a favor and leave a review it helps us with our metrics and analytics and we're looking for some more sponsors to come on during this off season. But during that press conference, they asked, what did you think of the job Scott Turner did? And Ron's answer was, well, he did his job. That was pretty much the gist of it. And next thing you know, 24 hours later, after everyone's in uproar, Scott gets fired. How much of just the commander's issues this season do you blame on Scott Turner? Uh, he, he gets, I'd say, probably 40%. 40? 40? So let's say 40. out of 100%. Yeah. Uh, out of 100% 40. and take Dan Snyder out of the equation and Tanya Snyder out of the equation. They, they, never, they, they never were a part of it. Yeah. They don't Who win, do you they give don't it win. to? 
they don't win ball games. So, so I, I would say that that Scott gets about, I'd say 40 to 50%. And simply because of his play calling and he didn't, I don't feel that he maximized what he could have done. And I feel as though, um, you know, when after a game is over and I don't know what happens afterwards, but you know, why wasn't Ron saying, Hey, why wouldn't we do this? Or why wouldn't we do that? You know? And, and I heard the, the, the press conference with, with, uh, you know, Ron and, 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 um, Eminem. yeah. And, um, as far as this whole running, running the ball thing, I, I that's not what you, you, that's, you didn't bring people in to do that. I mean, you brought Carson Wentz in because he was a passer. Even though he didn't, he, when he when he could pass, I mean, we know he he can throw the ball, but but he didn't do well. I don't know if he I can mean, throw the ball. He missed a yeah, couple of checkdowns and that Browns, but I know what you mean. Yeah, you know, and uh, we brought Fitzpatrick in because he was a passer. He was a gunslinger. So you've gone against what you said, and so well. On top of that, you draft Jahan Dotson with your first pick. You trade yeah. back. He was a wide receiver. And for just to go back, some of our listeners might not have heard the press conference. Ron Rivera and Martin Mayhew said they want to be a run first team, that they want to run two to every one pass. So two run plays at every one pass play. So they want to predominantly just run that ball until you can beat another team down. And that's what they want to do. And everything you're saying contradicts what they've done over the past two off seasons mm -hmm. with the additions they brought in, bringing Curtis Samuel in here, even though they use Curtis as a running back, sometimes, you know, he's a wide receiver and just seeing everything that happened. I'm right there with you. This was actually a quote of the press conference on why they want to be a run first team. <clears throat> For both of you, um, you have said consistently you want to be a run first team. Um, is that because of the personnel you have at quarterback, or is that a philosophical belief because most of the league seems to go the opposite way? I think it's a philosophical belief. I mean, for me it is. Um, I, I've been involved with that. Uh, I think a big part of it is that, you know, you've, you've got to be able to, to, to help your defense as well. You know, if you, if you look at a lot of the teams that, that do end up at the end where they are, most of them, rush for over a thousand yards as, as, as an offense, well over a thousand, I should say. And, and I think they control the tempo of the game. And, and I think that's what we need to do to win football games. We need to control that tempo of, of the game. You know, I do believe in a two back system. Um, you know, I've had success with that and I believe we had some pretty good success with it. Um, you know, unfortunately both those young men for us ended up on, on, on injured reserve, but well, I just, uh, B Rob wasn't injured. B Rob just didn't finish the last game. But, you know, they're, they're, they're a talented group of guys, and, and we've got to be able to use them. Um, you know, we've got some talented positions, and we've got to be able to get the ball in those guys' hands. And I'm right there with you on Scott getting 40 to 50% of the blame. I, I put actually, you know, what, 60% on Ron because he is the end-all, be-all with the team. He is in charge of player personnel, and he's in charge of his staff. The and the other 40% on Scott Turner because Scott didn't put Andrew Norwell and Trey Turner in an offensive line. That's Ron's fault. Yep. Scott didn't bring in Carson Wentz that, you know, we heard the press quote from Ron saying he's the bleeping guy that, you know, watched the tape and everything else and looked at the analytics. It was his choice to bring in Carson here. And to me, Ron constructed this team but yet he constructed this team to contradict what he and Martin Mayhew want the identity of the team to be. And it was too long a clip. I cut Martin Mayhew's part out of that. Martin said after Ron talked that, you know, they're basically a product of their experience in the NFL. And Martin said that his most successful time in the NFL is when he was with the Redskins. And we were a running first team back then. We're talking the 1980s. You know, it's just, it's that old school mentality that it reminded me of uh, when I was listening to the press conference. You remember that movie with Brendan Fraser and Sino Man? Okay. 
where you know he he basically gets i guess uh he's a caveman that gets defrosted or just comes out of the ice age right. and he's walking around california whatever the hell it is and everything is new to him that to me is martin mayhew and ron rivera looking at the modern nfl looking at what teams that are currently in the postseason are doing the nfl has changed its rules and ron is part of the competition committee the rules of the game favor passing offenses yeah. You can't touch a wide receiver past six yards or else he's going to get a first down for illegal contact. But yet you want to be a run first team where you have to get everything right in order to win that way. And that's what just is so old and antiquated in this logic in my mind. I wouldn't have a problem. I actually don't have a problem with what he said. I have a problem of how they put it together. If we had the line that he had in the eighties, Oh, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it at all with the hogs and, and the diesel. I wouldn't have a problem with it, but we weren't constructed that way. <laughs> so we are far, far away from that goal of what he's trying to say. Now, who are they going to bring in in the off season? And that'll be for a later show, but who are they going to bring in in the off season? You bring in some studs that can construct the line the way that you say you want it, then maybe I can I can believe what you're telling me. But right now I can't believe what you're telling me, and I agree I just, with you as well. Yeah, it, it's a it's a it's a passing league. It's you know? just you have to play damn near perfect football to try and grind out drives. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to strike. You need to be able to you know, win in a shootout. A majority of the games in the wild card weekend hit 60 points. That's crazy. And we couldn't get 17 points a majority of the time. So, you know, it's just things like that that were frustrating. And I feel that the mindset that they have, even if they had the workhorses to do it, even if we were the Tennessee Titans from two years ago with Derrick Henry, just running a storm up and down the field. Where did that get them? It didn't get them that far in the postseason. They got the division, right? And I think that's about it. That was it. Yeah. That was it. And I just, I don't think that is a, a recipe for success in the modern NFL. And they want to bring in an offensive coordinator. They've interviewed a bunch of people mm -hmm. and they're continuing to interview a bunch of people. I just don't know what offensive coordinator worth anything that's going to want to come here. And the only reason I'm saying that is Ron has one year left on his coaching contract. You have a new owner that is hypothetically going to buy this team in the next year or two. So why would a guy throw his hat in a ring when you might not have a job next year and you get passed up? And oh, yeah. yes, there are only 32 of them in the NFL, but the grass isn't always greener. It's something I like to tell people that I've mentored in the field I'm in. Just because they're going to give you more money doesn't mean in the long term it's going to work out for your bank account. Because how is that job actually going to turn out if you're not thinking one year down the road, if you're thinking three, four, or five years down the road? And to me, that's what some of these coordinators are thinking that are flat out telling them, no, I appreciate you thinking of me, but... I don't want to interview for your job. Yeah, because like you said, next year, new owner could say, nah, we're cleaning house. Everybody goes and this is who I want. And and truthfully, you know, it's even though it's it's unlikely, it could still happen. It really could. A new owner could come in and, and say, I don't want that. You know, I want I want the stadium painted pink. <laughs> you know we we've seen been in the military you know you get a new company commander who comes in and or a new base commander and the the, the old the base was running fine with the with the old base commander the new base commander comes in and says, well, well why do they do that i don't i don't like that i'm gonna change it and now everybody's like you're changing it oh my god so yes that is a possibility man and i agree with you you, you know 
no one wants to uproot your family and move. And now here you are again, having to possibly move again because you just don't know there's uncertainty, you know, yeah. there's a lot of it. And that's, you know, I'm, I think it was uh, Pete Haley on B Mitch and family. He called 2023 a gap year, or it might've been on their Washington football talk podcast that it was a gap year. If we could have Terry McLaurin and some of our studs just, you know, kind of, take it easy next year and, you know, save themselves for 2024 when we're actually really going to make a run at things and things are going to be changed. But obviously we know that's not the case. And yeah. it's frustrating because you're, you're wasting the years you have with the assets you have, mm -hmm. you know, the team took the fifth year option on Montez sweat, but they didn't take the fifth year option on Deron Payne. You know, it's that lack of foresight. And now you're in a situation where what do you do this off season? And, you know, Ron himself said that they were going to take a big step forward this year. Well, this was actually a question that he got asked in the press conference about that big step forward. Ron, can you understand you, you won seven games your first year, you won seven games your second year, eight games the third year. Mm -hmm. Can you understand that fans could have a hard time seeing how that, how is that a big step forward? How did you make a step forward when the win total is essentially the same? I would like to say the play of our players. You know, um, we had some extraordinary circumstances and situations my first year. Uh, my second year, obviously, that was probably the most disappointing. But this year, you look at some of the things that we did and you like to say, you know, they showed that they can come out and fight and play hard. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it's not easy. It's not simple. Coming back from where we were, uh, enduring the things that we've endured, um, You'd like to believe that people understand that, you know, somebody getting shot and not playing for four games and he was a big part and we tried to show that in the preseason. You think, hmm, okay, maybe, um, you know, and that's all part of it. But again, I really do think that you look at some of the things that we've done, you look at the youth on this football team, how these young guys have played, you look at the number of young guys we've put on the football field that played for us, that played meaningful minutes um, in big games and won. Um, you like to think that it, that shows that they are growing, that they're developing, they understand what it takes now. Um, so I, I'd like to think that that shows something. It's not always on what's on the one loss record that indicates whether you've grown a little bit or not. Um, it's been my experience that uh, winning certain types of games are important. And I think we did some of those things. You know, we've done it a couple of times where we, we beat the most, you know, the, the, the last undefeated team in games that we weren't picked to even come close. Um, we've handled those types of moments. So I think there's been some growth. I'm not saying we're there, but I'd like to think that we have a chance to get there. I thought last year we have a chance to take a step, and I do think we took a step. Am I disappointed we didn't get in the playoffs? Darn right I am. We had an opportunity to control our own destiny, and we didn't do the things that we needed to at the right time. You know, But there were some, ex you know, some, some things that we can't control. So the best thing we can do is control what we can, and that's the growth and development of our players. I just, I feel it's a cop out, man. It's just saying that it, it doesn't matter. But this was a clip from October 3rd of an interview that Ron did with Scott Abraham. So take a listen to this one. How would you evaluate yourself and the coaching staff in terms of what you can do better and how you kind of help turn this around? Well, we have a good feel for what we got to do, Scott. I'm not going to put that type of stuff out there because I don't need people judging and engaging. Okay, at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is whether or not we're winning or losing. How whether or not we're winning or losing is what it comes down to. <laughs> I mean, you can't lie. The clip is out there. He said it himself earlier this year, and he actually got on Scott for it, you know, that it's year three. We're going to take a big step forward in year three. Man. You were seven and five. The commanders were seven and five on November 27th with five games left in the season and six weeks left total. You had to buy them there. And you finish eight, eight and one. You and I laughed about it. We joked about it. You know, let's buy plane tickets to San Francisco and Minnesota because we got an 86% chance of making the playoffs and we're either going to be playing in San Francisco or Minnesota and Southwest gives you your money back. So we can just yeah. do that and we'll have our plane tickets set. So we don't got to worry about booking them the week of when we find out who we're playing. And you get one more game, you play yourself out of the playoffs when you literally have five chances to do it. It's just, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and yet you took a big step forward. And then you have the nerve to blame Brian Robinson being shot. Didn't like that. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. not at all. And it's just, it was so frustrating to hear that during the press conference. And only reason I'm going over now is because I know not a lot of our you know, listeners listen to those press conferences. And, you know, I'm jealous of you guys not having to hear some of the crap that we've got to hear because we're covering it for you guys. But it's just, what do you blame or who do you blame for us missing the playoffs? Seven and five to finish eight, eight and one. Where did it go wrong? Well, I damn sure ain't blaming the kid who got shot. I'm not bringing him up. I'd be doggone, man. <laughs> Gee, uh, it, it comes down to the big toe. And I, I, he's the head coach. And he says that it's not all about W's and L's. Well, I'm sorry. The fan base believes that it's about W's and L's. We've heard for so many years, you know, winning off the field, or, you know, it, it, it looked good, but no, it doesn't feel good. We know the difference. And like you said, 75, 86% chance. That felt good. That going on a four game winning streak, that felt good. But to have it squandered did not feel good. And then to try to tell me, but oh, we had other things that made up for that. No, that does not feel good. It just doesn't. So, I, he's the big toe, and so he gets the blame. It's like if a core, if 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 the, the team loses, the quarterback, because he's the head, he gets the loss. That's just how it is. So you got to blame him, and you, you know, you got to go back and say, okay, well, what were you saying in the meetings after these games? You know, why weren't the guys, not the guys, but your coaching staff, it seemed like, why weren't they, you know, why wasn't Scott calling the plays that need to be called in, in the right situations? And, and and I'll go back to what everyone knows what I'm about to say. Even you probably know what I'm about to say. Fourth and one. Fourth and one. Does that ring a bell? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want a does. sweep? You want a sweep toss? Come on, man. Come on. There's there been many times when we've had fourth and one and they do something stupid they try to pass the ball or, or or instead of just trying to run it up the gut you know and i'm actually surprised that it was it was fourth and one on the goal line and what it cars to do i'm actually surprised they caught a quarterback sneak and he dove over the top because i i i knew they were going to do like the like the seahawks and throw a slant or something stupid like that you know? yeah i just i just felt they were going to do it and we're so, talking that browns game right there with that carson play but yeah, yeah no i hear you and it's just but that was their identity remember they wanted to be a run first team but yet there's, there's a way to be a run first team. Being a run first team out of shotgun on fourth and one makes absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. You got to put your guys in situations where it's about percentages and where it's going to be a highly advantageous play. It's about yeah. matchups and scenarios. And for me, it went wrong from a play calling perspective, mm -hmm. from a game plan perspective. And Ron takes his hands off and he gives it to his guys. He lets... Del Rio, I don't really know what Ron does, but he lets Del Rio focus on the defense and he lets Scott focus on the offense. They had three weeks to prepare for the Giants. Three weeks, mm -hmm. those games. And you couldn't get a single win out of there. You know, it was a fourth and one, once again, on your own 35-yard line. And you decide to go for it with a quarterback sneak with Taylor Heineke. You don't even have your bruiser back in there that got shot earlier in the year. You don't even have Antonio Gibson in there. You know, and you just do those things. And it's just, it's what frustrates me with how we ended the season. But this was actually a question of why the team starts off slow. Because Rivera's teams here, since they've been here, traditionally start off slow. And this was Ron's answer as to why. Also, as part of your self-evaluation, the last two years, you've gotten off to slow starts. How do you self-evaluate OTAs? training camp, preseason, or what do you think you might look at in that regard? I think one of the things that we have to take a look at is, is the injuries coming out of camp. We had a lot of soft tissue injuries this year, and it's, it's really the first time. So far, the one major correlation that we found, it was one of the warmest summers we've ever had. And so we probably have to take a look at how we practice when, when the temperature goes up. Um, 
that's probably one of the, one of the, one of the things. One of those things that we're most certainly going to look at is is working with another team. You know, I go back to some of the experiences I had in 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 my previous start or uh, stint. Um, we had a couple of uh, we actually did it three times, and two of those three times we came out and we had really good years. So it's something we're going to take a look at also in this off season. So we had a slow start because it was hot outside. Well, that just tells me that he listens to the DMV mess hall because <laughs> we told our listeners, we told the staff, you got to put somebody else in another color uniform against these guys to see what they truly are. You're not going to get it from player on player of the same team. So you heard it. We, we preached it all preseason. We preached it, you know, the first couple games. And now look what's happening. So thank you, Ron, for listening to the DMV Mess Hall and, and changing up your coaching tactics and bringing in a, another squad. And I'm sorry, I lived in Texas. I played high school football in Texas, 104 degrees, and we practiced two-a-days. Now, I know high school football is not professional football, but I'll be doggone, bro. We did it then, and these college kids are doing it now. Now, I know that the NFL has, has gotten softer by, by the guys all in, who play college ball say, oh, college is a lot harder than the pros. But I'll be doggone. You got to instill that same mentality. You, you have to instill that same mentality because steel sharpens steel. Or iron sharpens iron. Whatever you want to hire, whatever verbiage you want to put on it. And allowing a guy – to just to, no, he's got to go play through that because that's going to make him tougher for later on in the season. So yeah, I agree. And you know, it's just bad example right now because the Cardinals didn't do well this season, but they practice in 103 degrees in Arizona. Mm -hmm. You know, there are teams that practice in South Florida. What do you think South Florida is in August? I guarantee that we're a little bit colder than they are down there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just excuses there's a lot of them but last last year during the owners meetings in march ron was quoted saying that he wants to play against another team and really what it came down to was nobody wanted to come here and you have to have another person to dance with when you make a trade in the nfl draft or a trade in general or a team in training camp that you want to practice against and they burned their bridge with Buffalo the way they handled the J.D. McKissick thing. McKissick, right, right. So they were going to say, <laughs> well, maybe they'll practice Buffalo. Well, the fact is we play the Ravens every year in preseason. Why aren't we practicing against them? The Ravens are just continually in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, They just got knocked out because Lamar Huntley decided to pull an okie doke and give up a 98-yard fumble but they're always in the postseason and they're right up 95. Why aren't you practicing against them? Why aren't you holding camp in Annapolis at you know the Navy Stadium and having something there, which is close between both teams? And you, know, you do a military theme because you're the commanders now, whatever the hell it may be. It's just different things that there's always an excuse after the fact. And we'll see come next training camp if they actually are practicing with another team because, you know, better be sure I'll save this clip. And oh. others are going to save this clip of Ron saying, well, we need to, you know, it was hot outside and we also got to practice against someone else. And I'm hoping that means that they're really going to focus on it next season. They have to. And, and if, even if it means that people bringing signs to, to training camp, you, you, you got to do it. You got to do it. And I, and I know that tempers, tempers are going to flare because it's hot and the whole nine yards, but that's all about football. You know, it's that's how you about... build camaraderie with your teammates. I yeah. mean, look at Josh Allen picking a fight during that playoff game and his lineman running up there and getting his back. You know, it's just, I don't know. I was down in a training camp in Richmond when a fight broke out with the Texans that year. Oh yeah. I was there too. Yeah. You know, it's just different stuff like that. It's, you know, I'm sorry. People are saying, oh, we don't want to practice with another team because somebody can get hurt. Come on. Give me that soft crap. Get the hell out of here. Someone can get hurt all the time. It's the NFL. It's pro football. Yeah. But if you want them to get better, 
you've got to play against another team. There's a reason why spring training baseball, they play baseball against other teams. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not just <laughs> inter-squad scrimmages here. And, you yeah. know, there's just there's a lot to it. There's a lot this team has to work on. And, you know, one thing that they feel that they have set up is QB1. So it came out that with all of these offensive coordinators that they are potentially interviewing for the job, they're saying, well, Sam Howell is going to be QB1 next year. I don't think that's really the case. The thing is, Sam is the only quarterback that is on the roster right now. Carson is going to get yeah. cut. Mm -hmm. And Taylor is an unrestricted free agent. And is Taylor going to be here? Who knows? You know, he's a Scott Turner disciple. So who knows where Scott lands, if he's going to go there or what's going to happen. But Sam is the only one that is on the roster next season. Do you really feel, and this was actually a question that we got asked by one of our listeners I think this was uh, Rafael Rubio asked, said, do you think Sam will remember what he did in the Cowboys game and take his education to spring training, I guess he means OTAs, and through the next game to September? Do you think Sam is going to be able to remember everything he went through between now and OTAs and training camp? I'd have to say yes. I'll, I'll say yes, he, he'll remember because he did it in North Carolina to become a pro. And if we really look at it, his game that he played in college transferred to this last Dallas game. And he got it done with his legs. He made some good reads and he made some bad reads. It's expected. I think, the fan, ba I think the fan base, Ted, realistically, wouldn't mind hanging their hat on how will it happen i don't know but i think that they wouldn't mind hanging their hat on him the same way they didn't mind hanging it on taylor to me he he's a step above taylor he's a step above and i think that giving the right guidance that he could be an okay kid but you gotta you've got to you just can't say okay we've got it and now we're, we're set no you you got to to revamp that offensive line and and we've talked about it in nauseam so i don't want to even continue on the, but you've got to re, you've got to revamp that offensive line i think that we would have won more games had we had a better offensive line oh agreed a thousand percent yeah yeah i i think so so that so that's why we, you said 40 percent on scott 60 percent 60 percent on, on on ron well ron now you there's no excuses now ron there really are no excuses. So what are you guys going to do in the offseason to bolster the line, to really bolster that line, to give, whether it's how or whether it's whoever it is, I don't, I don't care, whoever it is, to give them an opportunity to be great because you have let them down. They can't be great with the line that you've given them. Yeah. And this was actually Martin Mayhew's response with his plan at quarterback during that press conference. What is your plan at quarterback, and do you expect Carson Wentz to be with the team next season? Yeah, we're currently working through all that and having discussions. We're still in that kind of uh, season review process. Um, over the next few days, we'll be talking about all those things and um, trying to sort that out. we got to talk about budget, what we have to spend, uh, how we want to allocate resources, evaluate depth uh, in terms of draft and free agency, where those positions are and where we think we can add talent. Um, so we're, we're working through all that right now. And it came out after the press conference a couple of days later that they're telling other OC candidates that Sam is QB1. And I don't think that means that Howell is the starter next season. I think that means that they have to tell these OC coordinators, you know, if you've ever gone for a job interview or listeners out there, they'll give you different scenarios to work during your interview. Like, how would you handle the situation? And I think the only situation that they can realistically give these potential hires is Sam Howell is your quarterback. What do you do with him? When Ron came here, you know, when they interviewed him for the job, when Snyder interviewed him for the job, the question was, Dwayne Haskins, God rest his soul, is your quarterback. What are you going to do with him? Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be the same thing, whether whoever comes in here and Reggie, one of our listeners asked, you know, what do we think of 
Howell's performance and our thoughts on Howell. And, you know, you just gave yours. I think Howell's a good QB. Is he QB one for next year? Can I ride with him? Yes, I can by default. And it has nothing to do with Howell. It has everything to do with the fact that I don't want us trading for another quarterback. Derek Carr is going to be on the market. The Raiders are going to shop him around or cut him. And odds are it's going to have to be a trade. I don't want to give up draft picks for the future to get Derek Carr. You gave up two draft picks to get Carson Wentz when no one really wanted Carson Wentz. So you overpaid there. And I don't want this team to draft a quarterback because we won that Cowboys game. We now have the 16th pick in the NFL draft for us to get a good quarterback. Quote unquote, we've got to move up. So we've got to trade up. I don't want this coaching staff to trade up to get a quarterback that odds are Ron's gone next year that a new coach is not going to want. So I want them to ride with Hal mm -hmm. and maybe bring in a veteran. I don't want it to be Heineke. I want it to be someone else. I don't care who it is, whether it's a Mariota or a Bridgewater. I want someone else because the second Hal throws an interception, the chance are going to be Heineke, Heineke, Heineke. And we know what Taylor is. We know he's a 500 quarterback. We don't know what Howell is. And I don't want Howell having that dark cloud of the Heineke hive hovering over him the second he throws a bad throw, which we saw him do against the Cowboys. I just want to ride with Howell because it's an unknown and he's already here and we get a chance to save money and spend it elsewhere on an offensive line, on maybe bringing Deron Payne back. And I'll get into that you know, we'll talk about that in a future episode on what we think our offseason should focus on this year. But that's just me, you know, keep Howell there, bring in some other people to back him up or to compete with him in training camp that are not named Taylor Heineke. And then let's get some O linemen that can block, maybe move Sam Cosme in to guard, maybe draft a tackle. You can't draft a guard at 16, but do something because there was an article I was reading. I want to say it might have been on Rigo's Rag out there talking about, you know, all of our offensive linemen. Jerron Christian was here. San Francisco has Keith Ishmael, who we drafted. You know, a bunch of our offensive line that we have drafted and picked up, they're no longer here anymore. So we have to reinvest in that position that is, I would say, the weakest, if not top three in the weakest on this team. Yeah, I, I I agree with you on that. Um, I want to go back a a, a, a few seconds. Um, the Heineke Hive didn't uh, when Howell did mess up against Dallas. The Heineke Hive didn't come out. I, I don't have a problem with Taylor being the the backup. And it well, let me say this: What offense are they going to run? Is it something that's going to be Taylor's strong suit? But I think that, as I said, like you. We, I, I believe that the fan base doesn't have a problem hanging their hat on how. And when he was in the game against Dallas, no one, and he made a couple of mistakes. No one was, was Heineke, Heineke, Heineke. Like the game Wentz meant was, nothing. I, I see. I, 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 I feel if we could have, I feel if that game would have meant us making the playoffs, people would have started yelling for Heineke, but that game meant absolutely nothing. And it was also flooded with Cowboys fans. So you feel hypothetically that if, if Howell was in San, the San Francisco game that Wentz was in? The Browns game. Made, the, Browns go, the Browns home game. If Howell was in and Rivera said we needed a spark and I'm going to go to Sam Howell, and if Howell threw that horrible interception like he threw against the Cowboys where he was triple covered, <laughs> fans would have started yelling for Heineke. Uh, I truly feel that would have happened. Okay. I, I Maybe not as much. You, you, the boo birds were going to be out. So I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But then again, he wouldn't have put the, 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 the smart thing would have been to put Heineke in anyway, but that obviously didn't happen. So, well, he didn't know we could get knocked out the playoffs. So he didn't, you else. know, yeah. See, yeah, yeah. See, see, you know, I, I, I almost forgot about that. And that's something else that just, just puts a bad taste in my mouth, man. And, <laughs> you know, every time we, 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 we try to, lift Ron up like a roller coaster. I'm not trying to lift him up, but yeah. No, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Every time that we try to, it's like a roller coaster and you, you're going on that first drop and, and it goes, the roller coaster is going up, up, up. 
that's what it feels like a run, you know, because the beginning of the season, we, we go up, up, it's starting to go up. And all of a sudden, he shoots himself in the foot and he goes down, man. His stock goes down. And responses like that, your stock goes even further down than what it was to begin with. I mean, it can't get much lower. The problem is you have an owner that is selling the team that is not going to pay out this man's contract and the rest of the staff's contract. If Dan wasn't selling the team and it wasn't on the market, Rivera should have been fired. Rivera oh. probably would have been fired. Definitely. But he has money in a sunk asset, so Rivera's here. Scott Turner was a scapegoat. He was a Scott goat. You know, that's the only reason mm -hmm. that Scott was let go to shoulder the blame of Ron's mistakes. Yeah. If Ron knew that we could have been knocked out of the playoffs in that Browns game, odds are he would have gone to Heineke at halftime. But he yeah. didn't know. And it wouldn't surprise me if a majority of his players didn't know because he didn't tell them or else the players probably would have fought to get Heineke in there at halftime. Yeah. And it's they, just, they'd have been nudging them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's that frustration that I have. And it's kind of that bad taste in your mouth. And, you know, we've got a whole off season to shoulda, woulda, coulda. But I don't know if you saw this. So the Jaguars came back against the Chargers. They were down, what, 27 nothing. 27 nothing. Trevor Lawrence, first playoff win, and probably one of the most epic playoff wins in NFL history from coming back from that deficit. I can only think of maybe that Frank Wright game with the Buffalo Bills back in the day. but. Guess where he went for his celebratory meal after the fact? And keep in mind, all right, all right, hold, on, hold on. He is making uh, $24 million in a signing bonus, and he signed a four-year, $36 million contract. And he's getting paid $9 million a year. Guess where he and 20 of his friends slash teammates went for their post-game playoff victory celebration? Red Lobster. <laughs> that actually, I wouldn't mind, man. Those cheddar biscuits, those things are bomb. <laughs> but this was uh, his response on where he wanted to go after winning that game. Love you guys. Hey, appreciate you. Yeah, Waffle House. First time. Hey, Brennan. You have a have you? Tonight. So he took his friends and his teammates to Waffle House afterwards to have their celebratory dinner. And I had to talk to you about this, man, because I see your post-game celebration steaks. I mean, I think they've got chicken fried steak at Waffle House. I don't know. That might be the closest thing you can get there. But I was just shocked that that's where this young man decided to go with his teammates and friends to hey, celebrate man, their first playoff win. That All-American is a bomb, brother. <laughs> All American with a pecan waffle. That's a bomb, brother. I, 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 hey, Trevor, my hat's off to you on that one, brother. I'll take that all day. I don't know if I would have chosen Waffle House. I might have been, you know, an IHOP, rooted tootie, fresh and fruity kind of guy instead. <laughs> but, you know, I think the other part is Waffle House didn't take credit cards back in the day. They only took cash. Right. And I hated carrying. They do carrying, now, though. They do yeah, now. I hated carrying cash around me, but. We did a Waffle House menu when we played the Jags earlier this season. So we did have some of those, uh, I think it was smothered or whatever, uh, hash browns on our menu. And it was damn good. So, but we're heading into the off season, man. I'd be lying if I said I had high hopes, but really that's kind of all we got heading in. And I'm curious to see what will happen with the offensive coordinator position. What's gonna happen with the QB one position what's going to happen with the ownership. But one thing I do know is going to happen is you and I are going to keep at this for the next, you know, foreseeable future. And hopefully we get some more sponsors to jump on board with us. We're waiting guys. We're waiting for you. And I, I know we, we, we've uh, fielded a couple calls and looking to field some more. So to get this 2023 season off and running. And I'm here to tell you, Ted, he said Waffle House, which I wouldn't have a problem with. But I gotta tell you, I got I'm one of these guys after a, a true win, I gotta put my pinky up and go to Ruth Chris, bro. I mean I, I just gotta <laughs> go to Ruth Chris. I gotta get my tomahawk. That's just how I gotta do it.
Damn, that does sound good, man. And I'm actually going out to dinner tonight with the missus for restaurant week. So Ooh, you might nice. have inspired me to get a steak. Man, it's just something about a win. You know, I don't I don't eat steak that often, but when we win, I get steak. That's just something that I started a long time ago and said victory steak. And it's caught on because a lot of people now want victory steak after we win. So you never know what trend you start being a fan. So Man, we man. might have to do it after the uh, DC Defenders wins, man. Maybe go get that victory steak. Well, see, <laughs> yeah. it would be Waffle House. It would be Chuck Chuck Steak. There you go. <laughs> hey, it, it's, it's anything's fine with me. <laughs> yeah, it's a steak. But hey, man, I want to thank you guys for every. I want to thank everybody for listening once again. Ted, thank you, man, for, for bringing this whole podcast up. And I, I've had a great time, and I'm looking forward to see what 2023 brings in with us. And um, like you said, without you guys clicking the likes, you know, subscribing, that goes a long way. It really helps us out. And it shows to our sponsors that, hey, we do have a legitimate show. So we're here for you guys. And thank you guys for listening. And stay tuned for next week. And throughout the week, you guys continue to rep it hard. They don't rep it at all. Rally Captain, Tailgate Ted, will be 